few cuts. Yeah. I'm Peter Prince. I'm a bespoke shoemaker. I've been a bespoke shoemaker now for 25 years. Uh, I do it because it's part of what makes me me. I want people to have a good pair of shoes. I want them to be able to walk in comfort and look good. first process of the shoes, the last always comes first. So you take the wooden last, which is the, the former that's the shape of the shoe, and then you build the last up with layers of leather uh, to be the exact shape of the person's foot. What, what Nick is, Nick swore he was an 11, but he's not, he's a 10 and a half really. Mm -hmm. But it's his width that makes him have to wear an 11. That's why his, his shoes always curl up at the front and crease across the toe, because they're too big for him in the length. But they don't, they, he has to buy an 11 to get them wide enough, so what I'm doing is I'm making this last wide enough for his foot. It's a lot easier to make a pair of shoes for somebody if you know them. Because then you know what their life demands are. And you know what they're going to put their shoes through. If they walk dogs, if they walk in the country. Like Nick, if, he, if he's doing his burials and things like that. Do you know what I mean? They've got to be durable pair of shoes. But why leather is so good, and I think why they haven't changed from leather over all the years, is that leather is breathable. And it allows your feet to breathe and it moves with your feet. It's a skin in itself. So it's almost like a second skin. Mm. And shoes are the only thing of your clothing that retains the shape of you. Mm. The rest of your clothing just go flat when you throw them on the floor. When you take your shoes off, they're still the shape of your feet. So this is the shoe laid out. This is the outer skin of the shoe, the upper of the shoe, which is doing the grained leather. And this is the lining for the shoe, which is going to be the inside of the shoe. Twenty-four pieces. Hmm. I like to work with my hands. Mm. It's I've never been great at reading and writing, but I've always been good at making things. Even when I was a small boy, I could make things, but I couldn't write my own name and things like that. Do you know what I mean? When I sit in Ken's shed on my own, it's just like my God space. It's almost like meditation. I just don't really think about anything else apart from just the shed and the shoemaker. When I started, I was mainly self-taught, but then after a while, Lance took me to meet a man called Ken Dawson, who I mentioned earlier, he's my shoe guru, and that guy has just become my hero. So every time I go to his house and I see what he's working on, it makes me think, right, I've got to take mine up a few steps. So you feel like you're still learning? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever stop. And I go to visit him every week. He's 78 now and he's still a shoemaker. Yeah. And I reckon it will end up taking him out in a big shoe box. Yeah. I reckon that's the only way he'll ever stop. Do you think that means, is it like a lifetime thing for you as well? 
Uh, I think it's, it's a choice. It's never going to make me rich. I know it's never going to make me rich. Well, it has made me rich in the past, but I don't know whether it's ever going to make me rich again. Yeah. But it's something that I have to do because it's part of me. Leather's one of them things, it's quite forgiving. It's got a lot of stretch in it. Mm. And shoe making, when you're making by hand, is, is uh, an eye, making by eye process. There's no real measurements of where everything should be on the last. You just pull it onto the last until it looks right. And the hard bit is getting two that look the same because you're making a pair of things. I mean, usually when you're making something, you just make one and you've only got to get it right once. But when you make a pair of shoes, you've got to get it right twice. Otherwise, people can see the difference. You've got to just be in the right frame of mind. If you try to rush them, or if you try to get angry with them and take your aggression out on them, then it just shows. challenge of all is are they going to fit mm. when you take those measurements when you first start like we did in the, in the film uh, you're taking the measurements and you're writing it all down and all you're thinking of from that point till the, but they actually try them on is god are they going to fit the first time off. Oh, yeah. Perfect. the thing is with bespoke shoes especially at peter prince is that you can have anything you want. If you want a pair of country walking shoes like Nick's, you can have a pair of those. If you want a pair of brogues, you can have a pair of brogues. If you want a pair of opera shoes, you can have a pair of opera shoes. If you want a pair of 17th century riding boots, you can have them. There's no limitation on it yeah. because it's personal to you and those shoes are being made for you, for your feet, and they'll fit nobody else.